Hello and welcome back to the quality life and preaching video. So, I've heard some days that, you know, people say that they shouldn't have got out of bed in the morning. Well, I've been in bed now for probably, I don't know, a day and a half, 36 hours, something like that. You know, things still keep coming to me anyway. And keep getting busy and doing stuff. So, uh, this week in order to get video out, I'm doing it from this position instead of uh, up in my chair like I usually am right over there. But, uh, what I've decided to do today is quite a bit more reading, so in actuality this will be easier for doing editing. So, let's uh, get into it. So I'm going to be reading from John 5 verses 1 through about 15 and this is at, through the Legacy Standard Bible. Uh, I normally do my reading from the Physical Bible. It's from the New King James Version but this is what I read uh, electronically. So it's a little bit different, but it's still very understandable. So let us begin. After these things, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now, there in Jerusalem, by the sheep gate, the pool, which is called in Hebrew Bethesda, having five porticos, in these, lay a multitude of those who are sick, blind, lame, and withered, waiting for the moving of the waters, for an angel of the Lord went down at certain seasons into the pool and stirred up the water. Whoever then first, after stirring up in the water, stepped in, was made well from whatever sickness with which he was afflicted. And a man was there who had been sick for thirty-eight years. When Jesus saw him lying there, and knew that he had already been sick a long time, he said to him, Do you wish to get well? The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no man to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. But while I am coming, another steps down before me. Jesus said to him, Get up, pick up your pack, and walk. And immediately the man became well, and picked up his mat, and began to walk. Now it was the Sabbath on that day. So the Jews were saying to the man who had been healed, It is the Sabbath, and it is not lawful for you to carry your mat. But he answered them, He who made me well was the one who said to me, Pick up your mat and walk. They asked him, Who is the man who said to you, Pick up your mat and walk? But the man who was healed did not know who it was. For Jesus for Jesus had slipped away while there was a crowd in that place. Afterward, Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, Behold, you have become well. Do not sin any more so that nothing worse happens to you. The man went away and disclosed to the Jews that it was Jesus who had made him well. So let's look at a few things here. I can feel the top. You see that going down about verse 5 that it says a man was there who had been sick for 38 years. Now, some translations, instead of saying sick, um, it will say infirmity or paralyzed. Um, I don't know if it's showing up, but you can see on the bottom it says uh, the Greek of the original there is asthenia or noun form uh, that means weakness or sickness. Mm. So 
there's a little bit different translations, but he had some kind of problem for 38 years. And I'm familiar with that because this has been 38th year of having uh, quadriplegia. Uh, just in a couple weeks here, it'll be my 39th anniversary. So we aren't told how old this man was, but at any point, 38 years, that's a significant chunk of time. So Jesus asked him, do you wish to get well? Uh, yeah, I'm sure the guy wanted to. And he said yes, but he can't um, get into the pool and be healed that way. And this guy didn't know who Jesus was. He didn't uh, have faith in him because he didn't know who he was. So Jesus simply told him to get up, pick up your mat, and walk. And immediately the man became well and picked up his mat and began to walk. Now I've heard some people say that you just uh, you need to have enough faith and you'll be healed from whatever you have and if uh, you just have strong enough faith that's all you need. Well you can see here that isn't really the case. This guy had no faith in Jesus whatsoever and didn't even know who he was so it uh, was only God's will that let him uh, be healed and again, this guy was picked out from a bunch of other people laying around him. But another thing I want to note goes down here in verse 15. Excuse me, verse 14. So after the guy had been reprimanded, uh, Jesus found him again and said, Behold, you have become well. Do not sin anymore, so that nothing worse happens to you. Like, okay, what could be worse than what this man um, already been experiencing? I mean, for 38 years, he had been ill with whatever he had, and by the sounds of it, he wasn't able to walk. Mm -hmm. And at that time, I don't believe they had wheelchairs. So it's like, okay, what could have been worse than this? Well, as we see in other passages, what uh, he was talking about is staying in a life of sin and going to hell. So as we look at other verses, we can see that they speak about hell. So such so as Mark 9 here, verses 43 to 48 says, and if your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life crippled than having your two hands to go into hell, into the unquenchable fire, and where their worm does not die, and the fire is not quenched. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than having your two feet to be cast into hell and where the worm does not die, and the fire is not quenched. And if your eye causes you to stumble, gouge it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hell, where the worm does not die, and the fire is not quenched. So we see written here that three times we're given a uh, warning and description of hell that where the worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. Now some of the early manuscripts only have it written once in this series but the point is still the same and again we see in Matthew 13 verses 41 through 43 the Son of Man will send forth his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom all stumbling blocks, and those who commit lawlessness, and will throw them into the fiery furnace. In that place 
there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears, let him hear. So we see in these verses that the thing that's worse than um, a lifetime disability is being in hell. Um, I've heard some people say that we need to be thankful for whatever we have because it could be like this or that person that say someone doesn't have a leg or an arm or be like me that can't breathe on my own or that uh, can't move and I know other people that have something like spinal muscular atrophy that all they can do is blink their eyes and that's about it but you know we can always compare ourselves to someone that has more challenges but whatever is going on in this life is nothing compared to life to come so that is why when I look at things such as the Ten Commandments we can review them against our life and see that well, we have sinned and fallen short of what God's requirements are that each one of us deserves to uh, have our time in hell which is eternity however God sent his son that whoever repents and believes in him alone can have everlasting life does it again we read in John 3 just say in verse 16 that God who gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life so we need to remember that no matter what's going on in this world, no matter how bad it is, that it is nothing compared to what can't be in hell. But again, no matter what's going on in this world, that no matter how bad it is, that it is nothing compared to eternity in heaven. So this week's video again is a reminder to not wait that we don't know when our time on this earth will be over that we need to repent and come to God for our forgiveness of sins and not to uh, trust by works or anything that we do but to look to God alone for salvation so that is what I had for this week um, it will depend on caregiver schedules and what's going on and what I get done for a new video but each week is a little bit different so I thank you for uh, taking the time to watch this and until next week bye for now